Hey everybody, so this is a quick tutorial video if you just got Student iPad sent to your school and you're the tech person, the Spock, etc. and you're going to set them up so they're good for families. So step one, go to NYC DOE student email, click it, student account self-service, and use CSIS under the student profile to pull up their user account info. Type in their non-digit OSIS number, their date of birth, and that'll pull up their username, their email, and then you can also reset the password. That way you can get into the account. That way you'll be able to use the iPad. Step two, once you've reset the password, I like to sign in and make sure the account actually works. As long as you're able to log in, there's no error messages, then you know the account actually works. For the sake of student confidentiality, I'm not actually going to put in the user ID here, but that's what you do any error messages and then you have to create a family ticket you can put your contact information as a staff member and then you have to wait for the help desk to resolve that ticket if there's something wrong with the student account if you use google like we have a pu169m.org as opposed to the nycstudents.net then you're probably ready the google admin and you won't have issues with the account since you created it but if it's nycstudents.net, then you have to contact the help desk if any errors come up. Provided there's no errors, we'll go on so to step, step three. three. You've turned the iPad on, you have it plugged in, and you go to settings. And what I like to do, just to rule out all sorts of weird stuff from happening, is I put airplane mode on for about 30 seconds first. I found that lots of weird stuff happens with these iPads. I've put in Google Classroom, enter the information, it just gets stuck on the sign-in screen. If I start it off by putting in airplane mode for about 30 seconds and then taking it off, good. I'm actually counting down the time as I watch this video. Very good, 30 seconds have passed, airplane mode off. Then what I like to do, you'll see that's connected to the NYC DOE mobile Wi-Fi network. I'm gonna actually turn cellular data off just to rule out any kinds of weird conflicting issues. So now, I will try to log into each individual app and it should work. Also, you can see Zscaler is already set up because it shows VPN. And this is computer. What's today's date? Today is Friday, October 9th. So if you're getting these iPads now, then Zscaler is already in place. So a lot of those issues that we were having won't exist. All right. So now I'm going to start by clicking Google Classroom get started. So at this point, I'm going to stop the video because user credentials again, but I'll log in with the full email, the whatever it is at nycstudents.net or whatever your Google domain is. Continue, enter the username, enter the password, and then it should connect. I'm going to put in the email, the at nycstudents.net account. I've covered it up for student confidentiality. I'm going to click next and provided that you've entered a correct email it's going to come up to the NYC DOE sign-in page where you'll enter either the username or the email again followed by the password so I'm going to pause the video and put that in real quick and cover that up all right and then sign so in. I've entered the username and password I'm clicking sign in and now provided everything is correct Google Classroom will sign in and everything will work as it should And yep, we're in. Good. Everything is here. Very, very good. So the next step that we're going to do, now that that worked, and you'll see this is great, everything's updating. So my other advice is leave this connected. Leave it connected to the default network, which is NYCDOE mobile. I like to keep cellular disabled just while it's in the school building for the sake of connecting to that network and making sure that there's no conflicts with the internet. But I want this thing to be fully updated before a student gets it. So now Google Classroom, you'll see it just works like perfectly. Good. And now I'm going to go through, once Teams is updated, I'm going to do Teams. I'm going to do Google Meets once it's updated. I'm going to do Zoom. 
and one by one I'm going to log into all of these. Then I'll leave the iPad completely connected until everything's fully updated. You can tell it's updating. If it's great. Okay, like next that. thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Google Meet. What I've intentionally done is I've accidentally, air quotes, selected not to allow the microphone and not to allow the video. If a parent does that, that'll really screw this up, or if you do it, it'll really screw it up. So what you do is you go to settings, you scroll down, it shows you a list of all the apps, you select meet, and then see where it says microphone and camera, you put those on. And now it'll allow the microphone and camera. When you initially go to set it up, it'll ask if you want to allow the microphone and camera. So I intentionally selected no, just for the sake of showing that, because that's an issue I noticed that some people have. Pause the video so again now to cover up the student ID. So you click sign in. And then this is the student's account. It'll say whatever at nycstudents.net. Turn it blue to say like, yes, that's what I want to do. And then click done. that's it. On the bottom, it's actually going to say that you're signed in as and whoever the student is. And now you can see that we're signed in. So now Google Meets is all, all right, set. next step. So I'm going to go one by one. We did Classroom, we did Hangouts, now we're going to do Teams, and then we're going to do Zoom. So now I'm going to click on Teams. You can see everything actually updated by now. I am going to copy and paste the email in there. I'm just going to take this off for a sec so you don't see it and cover it up as per usual. Okay, I'm going to click sign in, having already put in the email, and now it's going to prompt me just like before to enter the credentials here. I'm going to very quickly put that in, cover it up, and then show you what that looks like. Now I'm going to sign in. All right, so now that we have signed into the Teams app, it's gonna ask if we wanna access the microphone and if we wanna access the video. Last time I intentionally chose no to show you how to fix it if you accidentally do that. This time I'm gonna click okay to both. Next, next, got it. Teams would like to use Bluetooth, okay. That's it. We are logged in. Teams is good. Next up, Zoom. All right, so now I'm clicking on Zoom. This one's a little different. That's why I'm showing you all of them. You'd assume it's all the same, but nope. So I'm going to click Sign In. I'm going to put in the credentials real quick. As per usual, making it so you can't see the login info. Protect, to protect student confidentiality. Good, good, good. Just covering it up. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to click sign in. Now this is the interesting thing. In all the other apps, automatically DOE website pops up. You have to actually click, and this is something that confuses parents, which is why I really want to set these up ahead of time before I give it to parents so I know everything works. You have to click log in with SSO, and then it already has this in, but parents are like, what do I do? Because it's there already, right? You click it. And you click go. It's crazy because there's no button around here, so it's super confusing. It's like, what do I do? You click go. And that is going to pull this up. Now we put in all the user credentials again. It's like such a weird thing that that is an automatic. Only for Zoom that happens. So I'm typing user credentials again.
covering it up real quick. All right, and sign in. Here we go. And it says open this page in Zoom, and yeah, definitely. Now, would you like to access calendar? Sure. And we're in. Zoom now works. All right, guys. So at this point, everything is fully updated. Classroom, Hangouts, Teams, and Zoom, which are the primary apps that we're using here across the whole DOE. Those are all working. And everything is updated. And now I'm going to click on Settings. And I'm going to click on Cellular Data. And I'm going to turn it back on. And at this point, you can power it down and you're able to box it and let the parent come pick it up. And that is how you set up an iPad for a student from October 2020 onwards. This has been Mr. Kamer from PS169, Department of Education. Have a great day.